Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is the 15 minute chart of gold overlaid on top of silver provided by netdania.com. Now you can see that we did get a smackdown from what was that potential breakout of this pennant or cup and saucer rising formation. And of course we had silver smack down harder than gold. That's typical and that's kind of a signature. You can see the volume wasn't a huge spike but it was fairly significant. They were both about to break out into new highs and then the selling came in and took them down. Of course took silver down much lower. The equivalent of 1309 on the gold chart. You can see gold still up at 1332. Gold is rallying now and it is still above where it was back here. Silver's significantly below. So when things go down, silver goes down harder. When things go up, silver goes up harder. That's just the way it is. Now, I apologize for the people who are having problems on the member site. There have been some DDoS attacks that I've had to deal with. I still haven't been able to resolve the issue completely. We put everything under Cloudflare, and that did reveal a lot of the attacks. But uh, I'm going to try to get to everybody whose password or pages aren't displaying and get that fixed real soon here. Again, I apologize about that. On that topic, this is a story that came out today. Yes, there are paid government trolls on social media, blogs, forums, and websites. We know that this is true. If you, if you have seen the things that Jennifer and I have seen, the attacks, one of the big reasons that we had to go with a member site was that it became virtually impossible to counter all of the comments, the attacks, the misinformation. Some of the stuff was just absolutely crazy near the end there. I ended up turning off comments on YouTube. Had crazy people making weird accusations like I have followers that are have been sent to break into their house. And I mean, you just wouldn't believe this stuff. And this is all disinformation and attacks that they do. So let's read some of this. Do you want solid proof that paid government shills are targeting websites, blogs, forums, and social media accounts? For years, many have suspected that government trolls have been systematically causing havoc all over the internet, but proving it has been difficult. Now, thanks to documents leaked by Edward Snowden and revealed by Glenn Greenwald, we finally have hard evidence that Western governments have been doing this. As you will see below, a UK intelligence outfit known as the Government Communications Headquarters through a previously secret unit known as the Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group. Joint Threat. A threat to what? The truth? That's silly. Has been systematically attempting to control, infiltrate, manipulate, and warp online discourse. This should be deeply disturbing to anyone that values free speech on the internet. It isn't just that the British government is trying to influence what people are thinking. The reality is that this is far bigger than a mere propaganda campaign. As Greenwald recently noted on his new website, the integrity of the internet is itself at stake. By publishing these stories one by one, our NBC reporter reporting highlighted some of the key discrete revelations. The monitoring of YouTube and Blogger, the targeting of Anonymous with the very same DDoS attacks they accuse hacktivists of using, the use of honey traps luring people into compromising situations using sex, and destructive viruses. But here I want to focus and elaborate on the overarching point revealed by all these documents, namely that these agencies are attempting to control, infiltrate, manipulate, and warp online discourse, and in doing so are compromising the integrity of the internet itself. And it goes on with the strategies. I've covered and documented these some of these in the past. There's a famous 
thread called Confessions of an Inter a Paid Internet Troll, which I think I've mentioned before. But these things are real. It seems absolutely bizarre. But you have to remember the key is always going to be this, that the people that we are fighting against will say, certainly the people who are behind the silver suppression conspiracy, they use lies, disinformation, and deceit. That's their method of operation because they're not telling people the truth. And the problem is when you use lies, disinformation, mind control, all sorts of things, false information, when you do that, you're very vulnerable to the truth because a, a tiny pebble or grain of truth can destroy a mountain of lies. That's just the nature of things. Truth has its own power and truth is it's more easily recognizable and and when you understand the truth about something it's something that it gives you a lack of confusion a type of peace when you come to understand something so it's not surprising that the other side has to use massive misinformation campaigns. We know that that's true in the mainstream media, but we also now now know that the alternative media is being invaded because if people are allowed to just openly discuss matters, then the truth will out. And of course, that is the concept behind the free marketplace of ideas as you know I believe in free markets I also believe in free markets for ideas and I believe that if there is a free market then the truth will win out apparently a lot of these paid government trolls are working for people who also agree that if there is a free market of ideas that the truth will win out and their lies won't succeed and that's why they have to hire armies of trolls to come in and try to confuse the conversation so let's go over and look at a couple of questions here. The first one is from iorky one And he asks, Hi, Brother John. I'm a big fan of the Australian Kookaburra and Lunar series. I like the Lunar series a little more than the Kookaburra series because you get additional coin size choices, two ounce, five ounce, half ounce. With that said, I have a lot of the 2012 Dragon series and based on my experience, I'm able to get 50 to $56 for the one ounce Dragons and roughly $330 for the 10 ounce Dragons. Side note, the premiums have gone up more than spot has fallen since I bought these coins which proves Lunar Series protects you from falling spot prices. Anyway, I'm selling some of my Dragon Series on eBay to buy horses at much lower premiums, thereby increasing my ounce count. I'm also buying some Maple Leafs because $22 to $23 is just such a good deal, but I won't sell most of my Dragons because I love them so much. I'm thinking of trading a lot of my older kooks to get more horses. Can you comment on my strategy? If a huge bull run kicks in, I think the spot price will gain more than the premiums, which suggests ounces are more important than premiums. What are your thoughts? Thanks for all your work. Appreciate it. You're the best, Ed. Great question. This is something I've been thinking about a lot as well. Now, I don't buy and sell my silver, so it's not a strategy I pursue. The strategy that I pursue is to try to buy them when they're cheap, try to guess which ones are going to be the most popular and therefore have the most premium and try to pick those up cheaply. But if I were to pursue this strategy uh, last within the last year or so, I've picked up a number of the half ounce Dragon series. The reasons why I picked those up and some of the two ounce as well was that I thought that the premium on the one ounce was just too high and I thought that maybe there would be some catch up with the half ounce. I picked up those starting around $22 when the price of silver was falling. I paid 
16 and 17. I think at the very low, I was able to pick some up in the 12 and $13 range. Now they're going for 30 plus. So if I were to pursue that strategy right now, I would probably sell off those half ounce dragons right now, trying to get 30. That would probably have to sell per coin on eBay. I don't think you could get that much for the rolls. So I would sell off the half ounce dragons and I would take that money and I would begin to roll that into the half ounce horses which are about 14 bucks right now. So if you did everything correctly you could probably get two half ounce horses for one half ounce dragon and then once those horses roll off and it goes to the next year you might have an opportunity to do the same thing again potentially doubling the ounces of silver that you have each time you do this so that would be the strategy I'd pursue like I said I I don't pursue that because I'm interested in stacking and and I just really don't sell any of my silver but that's definitely what I would do if I were going to do that I am a big fan of the lunar series I've watched them very carefully and they definitely get the biggest premium of the coins now the, I would say that the Canadian timber wolf is an exception and that takes us to our next question and that's about the birds of prey series that's a new series out of the RCM uh, this is from Ranger 1000. Hi, BJF. I just wanted to get your input about the new Birds of Prey series the RCM is doing. And there's a link here to the new Birds of Prey series. And this is the 2014 Peregrine Falcon. So I would say from 1 to 10 on the scale I would probably give this seven to eight as far as artistic there's just something about it I don't I can't give it higher than that it, it's very good artistically so I do like the coin but it's not phenomenal so I would put it around the level of maybe the grizzly but not the level of the, of the timber wolf but I'd put it ahead of the bison and the uh, the antelope so that would definitely be a thumbs up for that one of course there's always the issue with with Perth mint the water spots uh, the milk spots but uh, for 24.95 I think that's a pretty good deal on that coin uh, I think this is the first year of that product so I'm interested to see what the how many years it's gonna run and what the next one's gonna look like but just going by past history unless you're going to hit a home run and get something like the timber wolf you're probably more likely to get a quick premium boost from the lunar series horse i would say uh, although those are now up around fifty dollars a piece i believe for the one ounce horses so i would be sticking to the half ounce lunar series horses or the two ounce lunar series horses which seem to be a fairly good deal so back to the silver price it looks like gold is starting to rally and it doesn't appear that this smackdown is going to have legs now we did have janet yellen speak and we know that there's a tradition of smacking down the precious metals whenever a fed chair speaks it seems like maybe they're continuing that tradition but it doesn't look like it's too um, uh, too very a serious effort and it looks like gold may be turning around here and going back to challenge these old highs of course if that happens silver is going to follow along with it and uh, then we'll be off to the races again making new highs and we'll talk to you next time